All right. So um, <clears throat> let's continue with uh, where we left off. Now, uh, for this lecture, we want to um, we want to uh, look at general boundary conditions. Okay. So suppose you know you have you have your model problem, which is given by this, the heat equation. You have your initial condition. But now, the left boundary at x equals 0, the left boundary is given by um, a derivative uh, boundary condition. This is called a Neumann boundary condition. So du dx at x equals 0 is equal to some number alpha. Uh, the right boundary is fine. It's just uh, you know, the Dirichlet boundary condition, which is given by this. So the question is, how do you, how do you incorporate uh, such a boundary condition into your scheme? That's what we want to look at. Okay, good. So consider the implicit scheme, which is given by this um, for the interior um, domain. All right, so you have this g equals one to u minus one. Now, um, if we had, you know, Dirichlet boundary conditions on both the left and right hand side, then it's straightforward, right? If on the left hand side, instead of the um, derivative boundary condition, we just had a number dl then g at zero, the left boundary, will just be equal to this number. And then the right boundary is equal to zero from uh, the setup, and that's fine. So you, you just have these numbers on the boundaries, the right, and then the left boundaries, you know these numbers. And the system is fine, try diagonal, you can use uh, the Thomas algorithm to solve it. But now we have a derivative boundary condition on the left boundary. So how do we deal with that? What you do, one of the techniques is that you introduce a so-called fictitious value or fictitious, um, fictitious value or a ghost point, which is outside the main, the domain, right? So this is the domain ending at x0. So we introduce, you know, we extend this domain here. And then the points along here will be what is called ghost points. And so what you do is that on this boundary, Right at the left hand side, we have a derivative du dx at zero, and this boundary is equal to some number alpha. So you can use a second order uh, accurate scheme, which is first, the first order central difference scheme, to find the derivative of this, which is just given by this. The n doesn't really matter, it could be n or n plus one. Okay, so uh, central difference scheme will give you this guy here, uh, which is equal to alpha. Um, at on this boundary you can put j equals zero when j is zero you have this is equal to alpha okay note the negative one here okay so that is where the problem is so you can work that out and so you have u at minus one to the n is equal to this quantity now from the implicit scheme and seven note that the implicit scheme here which is seven here this is for j the interior point j equals one to j minus one but in order to incorporate the fictitious point or the ghost point, what you do is that you can put j equals zero inside in this uh, scheme here. When you put j equals zero, um, yeah, when you put j zero, you end up with this. So note that you also have a u minus one here. So you can really substitute this guy into here if you make n to be n plus one. So you can plug that into here and manipulate the resulting expression and then boom, you have equation 10, okay? So equation 10 now is the equation that governs the left boundary, okay? If it was just a simple Dirichlet condition, we just have a number, right? Now you have this equation to, um, to deal with. Okay, so that is how you deal with the left um, boundary condition when it is a derivative boundary condition or a Neumann boundary condition. So finally, for the left boundary where j is zero, you have this thing that we just uh, proved uh, or we just derived. And then in the interior, you have your um, implicit scheme. And then on the right boundary, we are given the Dirichlet boundary conditions, which is just equal to this. Okay, so that is, that is uh, how we do that. Note that even though we introduced a ghost point here in order to derive this, but the resultant system of equations, system 11, has no ghost point. So that is important to take note of. Okay, there is no ghost point here. So you can basically just solve this. And so um, 
The system now is tri-diagonal, which is very important and, and nice. Uh, you can see this, this is a very simple example. You can see this if you just form a stencil with only five intervals or six nodes, which is equals zero to five. Um, for n equals zero, for instance, uh, plug you know these Gs into the system and you end up with these guys, okay? So this, these are obtained from system 11. Okay, and so you have this, um, uh, which you can put in the form of a, a matrix, right? And that gives you the system. So you can see that the system is really tri-diagonal, all right? And you can solve it with uh, the Thomas algorithm. You just have to make slight modifications because unlike the previous one, here you now have a minus two mean instead of just a minus mean, all right? So you just make a slight adjustment you can use the Thomas algorithm to solve it. Great. So here's an exercise that you can uh, also try. Okay, so work this out and uh, you submit your solutions. So you want to use the implicit scheme to, de to derive uh, a system of equations similar to 11, similar to this, uh, this system here. Okay, but in this case, apart from the left boundary, which is Neumann, the right boundary is also Neumann. So there you go. And then you use your solution in A here, in the system that you have here, to derive a matrix equation, something similar to this. Derive a matrix equation when n is zero and when n is equal to one. Okay? So that brings us to the end of uh, how you deal with, you know, Neumann boundary conditions. Okay. All right, so I'll be coming your way with uh, some more videos uh, later on. If you have questions, uh, let me know. Okay?